Retro Ghetto. I love the Xbox 360. I think when I think back through history, it's probably the only time that I preferred the Microsoft console over its Sony counterpart. And when I look back, I have such fond memories of playing through this fantastic library of games. But fast forward almost 20 years, I still enjoy playing those games, but now I also love collecting for the system. As I said, the library is so vast. There's so many great titles I'm still learning about, so many real hidden gems even in 2024 when sometimes it feels like there's nothing new under the sun i'm still finding new games for the xbox 360 and not only that it's the amount of collector's editions steelbooks sleeve covers variants that came out and that were so synonymous with that era of gaming which for me personally i don't get as excited about in modern day gaming that yeah just really unites my passion for collecting for this console all of those reasons, plus the fact that it's still very affordable, make it one of my favourite systems to collect for currently. On this video today, I'm going to do a deep dive into my Xbox 360 collection. We're going to look at every single game special edition, unique item that I own for the system. And we're going to kick it off with the Xbox 360 kiosk. Okay, so you will see that I've dimmed the lights just to really highlight what the 360 kiosk looks like when it's lit up. I absolutely love it the sort of green light that it emits from this kiosk. Um, yeah, just love everything about it. I've had quite a few kiosks over my collecting years, but this is the only one that remains. Just a great piece to have in the collection, I think. It was originally Xbox Connect artwork. I didn't rate it much, so we went with uh, a customized Street Fighter 4 design. Really happy with how it turned out. As you can see, we've got that artwork running all the way down there. Uh, just a very versatile machine. At the time of recording, the Xbox uh, Live Arcade is still up and running, so I can just jump on here and download any games. But this sort of gets the most use when I have friends over when we play sports games like Pro Evo. I also play a lot of shmups on here. And, you know, in particular, one-on-one -on -one fighters, arcade racers. I don't know, there's just something about those games in particular that I enjoy playing whilst standing up. And uh, before we jump into the main event of the games themselves, there's just a couple of other Xbox 360 items I wanted to show you guys. So I have this Xbox official stocky side that I got from a video game store. Really happy to have that. I love those kind of store display items that you can't really buy anywhere else. Of course, you'll have all seen this on my videos, the life size and Master Chief. There is an Xbox Lite down there as well. And uh, also from that era of gaming, this fantastic Red Dead undead nightmare standing but let's get into the games okay so i've had to get comfy based on how many games we've got to get through obviously i've not played every single one of these games but the games that i have played through i've really enjoyed i will give you my thoughts on and i'll show a bit of gameplay of some of the games that i find interesting along the way as well the one thing that's put me off doing this video was how much i love my display currently and I knew I'd have to sort of take the display apart in order to show you guys each individual game. So what I'm doing is I'm doing it in kind of like shelf order. So I'm going to show you the first shelf first. That way I can put them back and so on and so forth. For the most part, they're going to be in alphabetical order. But there will be the odd sort of like anomaly where it's just because of display, where I have a collector's edition. Whatever. Let's just get into it, right? So, first of all, quite a new addition, to be fair. Uh, one I was uh, very happy to have. This was a successful CX lottery. This is the Tekken Tag Tournament 2 Special Edition. Comes with a beautiful art book. Uh, really enjoy um, collecting the bigger box stuff for this console. And this is just a prime example of everything I enjoy collecting for the system. Collector's editions at the same height as the game, so they display really nicely. And yeah, uh, just really happy to have this one. It's somewhat of an uncommon uh, collector's edition, this one. I'm going to do my best to put them down as I take them off to make it easier for me to put them back. So uh, if you see the glare shining off my bald head, you know what I'm doing. Right, okay, so let's get into the games themselves. So we have got 007 Legends. 007 Quantum of Solace. This is one that is on the backlog. I've heard good things about this one. A game which I played through, not last year, I think the year before. Really enjoyed it. And that is 50 Cent Blood on the Sand. This sort of came to my attention when it went um, as part of the Xbox backwards compatibility. So you could play it on the newer Xbox consoles. The price of this rocketed. And uh, yeah, it sort of caught my interest at that point. Played it, really enjoyed it. It's just sort of mindless fun, shooting everything in sight. It doesn't actually say it's welcome. Highly recommend playing this one. The price has settled back down uh, as predicted with this one as well. 
<clears throat> Adventure Time, The Secret of the Nameless Kingdom. This one looks really fun. The artwork looks, I don't want to say like a link to the past because you know that might be over egg in the pudding, but it does look like good fun this one and uh, one which I bought with the intention to play. I've just not yet got to it. And then we've got my first shmup, Akai Katana. Sadly, there's not too many shmups on the PAL 360. Most of them um, were only released in J Japanese regions. But a lot of these cave games came out uh, via Rising Star Games. They're a little bit too bullet hell for me, if I'm being honest. Um, but still, nice to have for the collection. And uh, I do play through this one every now and again via the kiosk. Alice Madness Returns, a very good game. Uh, there's been a lot spoken about this over the years. Um, it's like an action platformer. It's not your typical Alice in Wonderland. It's like even more macabre. And uh, yeah, really good fun. I didn't finish it, but I did put quite a few hours into it. I enjoyed what I played, but like I say, it wasn't enough in it to make me want to finish the whole game. But yeah, if, if this is uh, your kind of thing, definitely worth looking into that one. Alone in the Dark. Amped 3. Xbox Live Arcade Compilation Disc. So this has got like different versions of Pac-Man on and that kind of thing. Uh, card games. Yeah, just a few live arcade games. I found that in a charity shop, I think. Army of Two, Overkill Edition. Assassin's Creed Black Flag. Assassin's Creed Rogue. Battlefield Bad Company. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Battle 3, Battlefield 3 Limited Edition. It's making me think that was in the wrong place now because that should have been with my other Battlefield game. Sort that out later. <laughs> A game which isn't too cheap. Uh, I picked this one up. This is what the beauty of doing these kind of videos is. It jogs your memory. I picked this up. Like I say, it's not a particularly cheap game by Xbox 360 standards. And I had every intention of playing it and you know, when you've got this many games, it happens, right? Games fall by the wayside, but this is now a re my memory that I need to play this game. That's beautiful Katamari. Beowulf the game. Not sure about that one. I didn't really enjoy the movie too much, if I'm being honest. Um, I like buying compilations and combo packs. I love weird and wonderful things. Uh, and this is one of them. An award-winning combo. Combined winners of over 80 Game of the Year awards. I mean, there's a lot of value for your money there, right? As Bioshock and Elder Scrolls for Oblivion. One which I'm not going to lie, I bought for the cover by a Russian developer, I think. And that is Blades. I'll, uh, yeah, and I'll show you the artwork on that one. Black Sight. Blood Bowl, part of the Warhammer universe, I believe. Blood Drive, this is a fun looking title. One which I anticipate will go in per price. I haven't checked recently to know if that is the case or not. Um, but yeah, like I say, I was trying to get sort of all the arcade racers. This plays a bit more like an arena fighter slash racer. But uh, yeah, this is another one which I intend to play. Blue Dragon. Borderlands, the pre-sequel. Brink. Brutal Legend. Another one I've heard positive things about. Very cheap game. Another one of my arcade racers. I'm going for a full arcade racer set, although there are some very expensive ones, which I'll get to a bit later on. Blur. Bullet Storm, the Epic Edition. Really nice one, this, and again, very cheap. Uh, Burnout Paradise, the Ultimate Box. Burnout, just great series of games, and this is like one of the best ways to play them. Chrome Hounds. And we've got a whole array of Call of Duty games here. I'm not going to go through them all individually. But we've got Modern Warfare 3, Ghosts. I think I'm going through them all individually. <laughs> Advanced Warfare, Call of Duty 4, Call of Duty 3. Yeah, just Call of Duties. Call of Juarez, Bound in Blood. Nice one to pick up, not a cheap one. And that is Capcom Digital Collection. 
some really nice titles on here. 1942 Super Puzzle Fighter Final Fight. You've got the HD Remax of Street Fighter 2, so on and so on. Yeah, uh, definitely worth picking this one up. And this is one of them games it's absolutely perfect to put in a kiosk and just, yeah, just have there to play as and when. Another one which I keep saying I'm going to play and get through my backlog. Castlevania Lords of Shadow. I haven't played either of the Lords of Shadow titles. But I do intend to. One which I picked up because I love the original movie. The, the remake was okay. Not as good as the original, but I just love that sort of um, source material. And that is Clash of Titans. There's another charity shot find. A couple of Command and Conquer games here. We've got Command and Conquer 3 Kane's Wrath and Command and Conquer 3 Tiberium Wars. Fond memories of playing Command and Conquer on the PC back in the day. And Condemned 2. And that is the first of my shelves. So let's go and put these back and then we'll get the rest. Okay, so as I alluded to, some of the arcade races are expensive on the console. The series of which is very expensive is the Crash Time games. This is actually one of the cheaper titles, uh, Crash Time 3. But some of these games are very expensive. There's about four or five on the console and uh, yeah, they're very much in the one day category. We've got Crisis 2. Crisis 3. That is the Hunter edition. A series which I've fell in love with in recent times, Darksiders. And speaking of which, it might be a good time to mention my Darksiders 2 Collector's Edition. It's one of my favourite pieces in my 360 collection. Um, there's a common theme with the Collector's Editions I uh, like to own, and that is this sort of like open plastic window area where you can see the figure inside. Because I like to display them in the box, but if you can see the figure, then yeah, I really enjoy displaying them. and. This is definitely one of my favourites in my collection. Absolutely love this and loved the game. Okay, moving on, we've got The Darkness. Dead or Alive 4. Another one of the subsets I would like to complete is One on One Fighters. Crackdown 2. Dead Space 3. Dead Space 2. Can you guess what's next? It's Dead Space. Then we've got Driver San Francisco, a game I've heard a lot of positive things about, I've just not got around to it yet. Another compilation, another great one to play on the kiosk, that's the Dreamcast collection. Uh, yeah, I mean, just standing up, playing Crazy Taxi, it's almost like being in your own arcade at times, right? So yeah, absolutely love that. Dragon Ball Z Ultimate Ten Kaichi, I think is how you pronounce it. Shout out to my homie, Theo Slamas TV for this one, he gave me this sealed promotional copy. Out of Dragon Ball Z Battle of Z. Dragon Age 2. Another HD collection. We've got the Devil May Cry collection. Def Jam Icon. I'm a huge fan of the Def Jam games. Well, the early Def Jam games. Not so much this one. This is a nice game to look at. I think this one tried to be a bit too clever. But tried to incorporate the music and the beat. And it didn't quite work. Especially when you've got the heights of Def Jam Vendetta. And in particular, Fight for New York. But this isn't a bad game. Another of the cave shooters, Death Smiles, the Deluxe Edition. The Dead Rising Collection. Another series which I need to put some time into. Dead Rising 2 and Dead Island. Let's put these away. Okay, third shelf, and we are on. Duke Nukem Forever. Fable 2. I don't know if this is supposed to have the black case. This is part of the collector's edition, I believe. 
um, which I will get to later on. But let me know if it did come with the black case in the collector's edition or if I need to switch that one out. Uh, Fallout New Vegas. I put a lot of time into Fallout 4 on the PlayStation 4. I always hear that the others are better, New Vegas and Fallout 3, but I've never put any time into them. Fallout 3 Game of the Year edition. Far Cry 2. My favourite Far Cry, the one that sort of got me into the whole franchise. Far Cry 3. This is one which includes uh, some additional DLC. What I'll do quite often is um, I'll own the standard copy of the game and whilst I'm out and about, whether it be in CEX or charity shops, if I find like a rarer one, one which has got like a cover which I don't see as often or it includes DLC etc, then I'll just sort of add that to my collection and switch them out. Far Cry The Wild Expedition, this is one which is somewhat uncommon uh, and definitely worth picking up if you can find it. So this features um, Far Cry Classic, you've got Far Cry 2, Far Cry 3 and also Far Cry Blood Dragon. Um, so yeah, that's uh, somewhat of an uncommon one if you can find that out and about. Fatal Inertia, which I believe plays like a wipeout type game. And then we've got, I found all of these on one stall at a car boot. So we've got Fear. Fear 2 and Fear 3. I believe there is a fourth Fear game in the franchise. That's, that's a tongue twister, um, which I still need to add. Uh, another compilation, Fighting Edition. Nice one to add. Three nice games on there. Soul Calibur 5, Tekken 6 and Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Just an absolute stone cold classic. I played through this whole game on the kiosk uh, about three or four years ago now. Uh, and that is Fight Night Champion. We need another fight night, right? Absolutely love this game. It still stands up to this day. Fantastic game. And then we've got the Football Managers. So we've got Football Manager 2007, Football Manager 2008. One of these was getting quite pricey. It might have been 2008. So again, don't overlook those if you find them. Flat Out Ultimate Carnage. Full Auto. And as I said, going for that Full Arcade Racer set. And then we've got Gears of War, probably the first game I played on the 360 console. When I first got a 360, I remember buying the console and this was like the era where I think HD televisions were sort of like becoming a little bit cheaper. I remember I lived on my own in a flat at the time. I bought a 360 console and I bought like a 19 inch HD TV because I had like a big plasma or whatever they were back then as my main TV. And I bought myself like a little 19 inch and I literally had it on my sofa here. So I just sit there, play my game, and I vividly remember playing through Gears of War with my new Xbox 360 and uh, Gears of War, as I say, and playing on HD on that small TV. Oh man, it was like the cutting edge technology. I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, Gears of War 2, Gears of War 3, and Gears of War Judgment. I don't think I've ever played through 3. I hear good things about 3, so that is one I need to jump into. I played the first two. Uh, speaking of games I've never played, The Godfather 2. Then we've got Grand Theft Auto 4, Grand Theft Auto 5, Grid 2, Gone. We've got the start of the Halo series, we've got Halo Combat Evolved. Some of these games we will be seeing again as duplicates when we get to like the sleeve covers and variants later on. Halo 3. Halo 4, another series which I hadn't played at all until a few years back and I played through the first two. I mean having a life size Master Chief came with the impetus to play through the series, right? So I played through the first two via the Master Chief collection. Uh, I did say I'd keep playing, I didn't play one last year so maybe this year I'm going to have to play through, uh, I think Reach would be the next one on my list. Uh, Heroes Over Europe, Hitman Absolution if I don't throw all my games away. Iron Man 2 and Import Tuna Challenge. Pick my games up. And we've got Clive Barker's Jericho. Juiced 2. Just Cause. Just Cause 2. These games are really interesting to me. Let me know another one. Let me know in the comments if the Just Cause games are worth picking up. Killer is Dead. This is one that I think I spoke about on a 
video way back of 360 games that I think will go up in value. Again, whether it has or not, I don't, I'm not sure. This is a great one to own, right? King of Fighters 13. The artwork on this game is second to none. I haven't put as much time into it as I would have liked to. But yeah, this is just a fantastic looking game. And it comes with this really cool poster as well. Um, and this, which have all the move sets of the characters. Just a great, great game if you can find it, especially complete with the poster. So yeah, bit of a highlight for me, that one. And then we've got a few LEGO games. I don't really tend to go after the LEGO games on this system. Because I've got so many of them on the Wii, that tends to be the console that I collect them for. But I've got LEGO Marvel, Marvel Super Heroes, LEGO Pirates of the Caribbean. I think that's about it. They're ones I'll play through with Little Man one day. Another compilation, another one I said will go up in value, as to be honest, all compilations will. And that is the triple pack of Trials HD, Limbo and Splosion Man. But it's Limbo that I really want to play. It looks like a really interesting title, that one. Um, plays like a little bit of um, quite a macabre action platformer, I believe. Uh, I think it's mostly in black and white, certainly on the grey scale. Definitely one that I intend to play one day, uh, hopefully this year. And then we've got Lost Odyssey. Finally, another recent addition. This was a very successful CEX lottery, uh, and that is the Bioshock Collector's Edition. One of my favorites, another highlight in my collection. I just love it. It ticks all the boxes for me, right? With the big daddy in there. I love how that gives it like the whole rusty, rustic look, similar to um, the game itself. And on the back, I love how you can just see through to the steel book inside and this is what i'm talking about when i talk about my love for collections collector's edition sorry of this era they just don't seem to make them in as much abundance anymore or with the same love and care you just sort of get a bigger box version now via some sort of limited company and they usually put a cd in it or a key ring or something you don't want um obviously times are changing right with the general cost of living and the prices of everything going up maybe that's something to do with it but yeah i, I miss these kind of collector's editions man absolutely love that Okay, we are kicking off the next shelf with a bit of a bang because this is what I believe is a bit of a hidden gem. Uh, I've heard very good things about this game. Um, I think it was Gordon Gibbo A4. Shout out to Gordon, who sort of really put me onto this game, and uh, one which is very high in the backlog. It's a big backlog, as you might have guessed. Uh, but that is Magin and the Forsaken Kingdom. Yeah, just looks like a really interesting game, and everyone I know that's played it has nothing but positive things to say about it. So, yeah, that's why that's high up on my list. A very highly regarded fighter, uh, and that is Marvel vs. Capcom 3. <sighs> a game which genuinely is probably one of my favourite games of all time, and it came out of nowhere for me. The first couple of games I remember playing as a kid didn't really get on with it too much. I remember there being a lot of like, fanfare at the time, and I always remember those blood levels where you have to stay on the bloodline, and maybe I was a bit young for it. Maybe the PlayStation 2 wasn't quite developed enough for something that ambitious. I don't know. But uh, the third entry in the franchise, you know when you just put a game on randomly with low expectations and it turns out to be just phenomenal? Well, that was my experience with Max Payne 3. I loved everything about this game. I loved the gameplay. I loved the story. I loved the character building. I loved that it didn't outstay its welcome. It wasn't overly complicated. I can't fault this game. There's nothing I could say negatively about this game. Absolutely love it. It's one of very few games in my collection I will go back and play again. I've got so many games on the backlog that I've never played. I buy so many games at such a frenetic pace that the thought of going back and replaying games doesn't really enter my mind very often. But I love this one so much that, yeah, I'm definitely going to be playing through this one again very soon. And then we've got Medal of Honor Limited Edition. Midnight Club Los Angeles. I love the uh, sort of like metallic embossing on these games. Again, something you just don't see as much anymore. That, that sort of seems to be like a lost art, right? Midway Arcade Origins. Mirror's Edge. Uh, 
Mortal Kombat. A sealed copy of NBA Jam. We've got Need for Speed The Run. For me, one of the best entries in the Need for Speed franchise. After like the early entries of um, like Need for Speed, uh, what were they called? I've got, I've got it up here somewhere. What were the early games? It was Need for Speed. Anyway, the first couple of games, really good fun. Uh, but this one, Need for Speed The Run, massively went under the radar. I didn't even hear about it when it came out. And they're bringing them out in such a frenetic pace, right? There were so many Need for Speed games coming out at that time. Felt like every six months there was another Need for Speed game. But that one basically plays like you're on the run from the Mafia. And rather than doing circuits or laps, you literally go from one side of America to the other side. What's being chased by the Mafia, there's some quick time events. It's, it's really good. The story interlinks well with the race in itself. And another game that I would happily play through again. And then we've got Need for Speed Shift. Need for Speed Carbon. I think this is one of the earlier ones, right? Need for Speed Most Wanted. This has become a very expensive game on the 360 from what I remember, unless it's come down in price. Um, again, I think it's one of the ones that most people probably had on the generation previously, I think. Um, and yeah, it's just become a very expensive title if you want to be able to play it in HD. Need for Speed Hot Pursuit. I don't know if I'm missing any Need for Speed games, but there's a lot here. Uh, Nia, a game I tried to get into, I bought this, um, it was one of those games that keeps going up and down in price, at one point it was like a £40 game, then it went down to like a tenner, so I bought it, love the art style of it, it's very highly regarded, I did try it, I played about, I'd probably say about four or five hours, I did give it a good go, I didn't fall in love with it enough to finish it, but it's certainly an interesting title. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2, I believe, yep, Gaiden, Gaiden. Another one of those sort of like triple packs of games which I think were only available as part of the sort of Xbox Online. So you've got Outland, From Dust and Beyond Good and Evil HD. I've heard good things about Beyond Good and Evil HD. Uh, again, as with all these compilations, pick it up if you see it. Another one which went very expensive on the PlayStation 3. I don't know if the, it's quite reached those heights on the 360, but that is World of Outlaws Sprint Cars. A dreadful game. Just shocking, me bad game. Um, from bad games to flipping amazing games, nearly saw them. Project Gotham Racing 4, man. Me and my friends, this is arguably the game I've spent the most time playing on the 360 hands now. Me and my friends just used to play this on multiplayer hours on end. Just a fantastic, fantastic game. Portal 2, a game I played through. Everyone seems to love it. If I'm being honest, I think it outstayed its welcome a little bit. I think I'd been better off with the original Portal. It was more of like a demo for what became that game. I just, I just got a bit bored, if I'm being honest. I did finish it, but I was glad to finish it. Uh, Prey. Pure. Love that metallic artwork. Quake 4. Quantum Theory. Rage. One that I found recently at a toy fair, one which isn't particularly cheap. Apparently it's not great, but it's one of the games I really want to find out for myself. And that is Rambo, the video game. Command and Conquer Red Alert 3. That should not be there. That's been put in R instead of C. We'll have to get that moved. Resident Evil 5 Gold Edition. That was a charity shop upgrade find. Red Dead Undead Nightmare. We've seen the standee earlier. Um, I played through that last year. I don't know, I was a little bit disappointed. I think because I had so many bugs, um, it kind of affected my enjoyment of it. I had to like continually do missions over and over again for it to sort of register. Uh, Resident Evil 5, Standard Edition. Uh, another one which went up in price because of backwards compatibility, similar to the 50 Cent game. Ridge Racer 6, fantastic game. Love this game. Uh, I don't know if I can say I've completed it. I'm not sure. I can't remember where I got to. I think I finished all the races... But then I think like once you complete it, it's like, right, now there's some next level difficulty races. Do you know what I mean? So it's like I finished it, but then there was a bit more and I never finished a bit more. But absolutely fantastic game, this. It's definitely come right down in price again. It went up to like 35 quid, but it's, it's gone a lot cheaper than that now. Definitely pick this one up. Uh, I feel like putting that on when we finished uh, <laughs> filming this episode, actually. Uh, Fallen Angel Sacred 2. SBK Generations. 
and a sealed copy of Sega Superstars Tennis. A fun game, actually. A fun game. Okay, and kicking off the next shelf, we've got this nice collector's edition, the Balls of Steel edition of Duke Nukem Forever. Really cheap. This is like 20 quid or something at CEX. Again, the game itself, you know, didn't exactly get much critical acclaim, but really nice display piece, that one. And then we have got... Where are we? Yep. Sega Rally. I put that in uh, not too long ago, actually. I didn't quite get to grips with the controls of it um but graphically very stunning one of the best looking games on the system really nice looking game um this should be probably be with the need for speeds i think but that's shift two hey the need for speed game right yeah so many need for speed games in that era it's unbelievable can't keep up with them all uh, sniper ghost warrior always love that box art and then soul caliber four Split second velocity. South Park, the stick of truth. The amazing Spider-Man. That's its name, not my review. Spider-Man 3. Splatterhouse. Good fun, that one. Super Street Fighter 4. I believe the first ever Street Fighter games um, on the 360 Street Fighter 4. I really enjoyed Street Fighter 4 as well. For me, it was the last great Street Fighter. Syndicate. Rockstar's Table Tennis. Now, I've actually heard this is really good. <coughs> uh, it's one of them games that you probably would just dismiss, but what intrigued me was the fact it's Rockstar. And Yeah, I've heard a lot of people say this is a good time, so this is definitely one I'm going to play one day, just out of intrigue as much as anything else. It's not a game you'd associate with Rockstar, right? Table Tennis. Uh, another classic, Tekken 6. Um, this, I believe, features um, the other Tekken games as well. I think you can play through like the arcade mode of Tekken 1, 2 and 3. Tenku Z. Or Z. Test Drive Ferrari Legends, another uncommon one. Test Drive Unlimited. Time Shift. Titanfall. Tony Hawk's Proving Ground. Top Spin 4, which I remember playing when it first came out. And then we've got this nice collector's edition of Alan Wake. What's really nice about this is it actually comes with a novel. Um, I tried to play through this last year, put a few hours in, couldn't quite get to grips with the controls. I think I was guilty of knowing that there's a remastered version of it. So I was playing through it, getting slightly annoyed with how dated it was at times, thinking there's a better version of this. And mentally I couldn't get over it, so I never finished it. So I'll have to play through the uh, play PS4 or PS5 version at some point uh, in the future. And then we have got Transformers Dark Side of the Moon. Sealed copy of Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. There's another Transformers game which is quite expensive. I found it in a charity shop and sold it. Um, I kind of wish I hadn't. At that time I wasn't really on an Xbox 360 kick as much as I am now. I remember just finding it in a charity shop and being like, wow, this trades in for £20. I took it straight to CX, got my money, bought something else. But uh, I wish I'd kept it now. Uh, and then we've got Turok. Never played or heard anything about this version. I, of course, played it on the N64 back in the day. UFC Undisputed 2010. And we've got the Ultimate Action Triple Pack. Just Cause 2, Tomb Raider and Sleeping Dogs. And the Ultimate Stealth Triple Pack, which is Thief, Hitman and Deus Ex. Again, pick up collections if you see them. Uh, one of the other only schmucks on the um, console, all released by Rising Star Games actually. And that is Under Defeat HD, the Deluxe Edition. This is a game which I highlighted on the channel. Um, it ended up going quite high up in price. I think it's settled back down again now. Uh, again, it comes with a nice poster. 
it's not my favorite shmup because the way it plays you have to sort of like move the helicopter and then shoot rather than like being able to do it on the fly it's a little bit cumbersome i've never put enough time into it to sort of perfect it but the couple of times i've tried to play it i just didn't it just didn't come naturally to me the controls interesting title nonetheless a game that i did really enjoy i thoroughly intended to finish it i just got distracted by other things and that is X-Men Origins Wolverine, the Uncaged Edition. Really good fun, this game. Once you get to grips with the controls, again, I remember the controls being a little bit um, difficult to become second nature, but once you get used to it, um, it's a really fun game. There's a lot you can do in that game in terms of the combat. Uh, Walking Dead Survival Instinct. Cheap game on the 360, but if I remember, very expensive on the Wii U. Vin Diesel's Wheelman. Pick that up out of intrigue as much as anything else. Wolfenstein. WWE Legends of WrestleMania. WWF. Well, it's not WWF anymore, is it? SmackDown vs. Raw 2007. Don't want the pandas to come after me. Uh, SmackDown vs. Raw 2010. And then change to WWE 2K. So we've got 2K12. 2K13. And we have got a sealed copy of Yaiba Ninja Gaiden Z. This comes with like a, a comic, I believe, and things like that. <clears throat> and then the last of the basic edition Xbox 360 games is my Pro Evo set. Um, yeah, I've spoke many times on the channel about just my fond memories of playing Pro Evo, man, with my friends growing up, my adolescence. Spent many hours, days, weeks, months, years playing these games. Uh, I haven't quite got the full set yet, but I've got most of them. I've got the more expensive ones. So I've got Pro Evolution Soccer 6. 2008. Even just looking at these cases, man. It's just pure nostalgia. 2010. 2011. 2013. 2014. 2017. So there's a couple missing there. And 2018, which was a very expensive game, since come down in price, but it's never in stock. It's an uncommon game, so I anticipate that one will go back up in price. But yeah, I'm almost with my full set of Pro Evos. Okay, so now we find ourselves at the sort of steel box, the big box editions, the interesting stuff. First one, I love this thing, man. Uh, Need for Speed Shift the Special Edition. Again, one of them games I've double dipped on. You've already seen Need for Speed Shift. But I just love this. Look at that. It's like a tyre, rubberized, and then it has the game inside that with the sleeve cover as well. Uh, I love these kind of gimmicks. And again, you just don't get this kind of thing in modern gaming, right? Um, yeah, real, real high on my uh, list of favourites, that one. And then we've got the Devil May Cry 4 Steelbook. Perfect Dark Zero. Did this only come out in Steelbook? I'm sure every time I see this, it's this Steelbook version. Prince of Persia. A franchise which I'm acquainting myself with currently. I'm playing through the new game and I intend to go back through the series. Shadow of Mordor, one of them nice embossed steel books, that one. Resident Evil 6. And then we've got the big box climax edition of Bayonetta. Murdered Soul Suspect. Recent find in CEX, the Mass Effect Trilogy. LA Noir, the Complete Edition. Uh, Modern Warfare 2, again, Steelbook. Uh, one of my favorite collector's edition of my whole collection 
is the Saints Row 2 Collector's Edition. Now, when I first got this, I actually thought it came with a gun, somewhat naively. It doesn't, that's just like an embossed piece of cardboard. It actually comes with a bullet, which is doubles as a USB stick. Um, but yeah, I mean, I bought it for the display and it displays so cool, man. I love this thing. Right, okay, kicking off the next shelf with a bang and what is one of my favorite steel books in my whole collection. I had to pay for this. This is one of them rare steel books which is entered separately into the CX system, so this wasn't the basic price when I found it. Uh, and that is the Dragon Ball Raging Blast Limited Edition. I mean, let's just look at that. It's absolutely beautiful artwork. Uh, it comes with like a comic book. More beautiful artwork on the back of it. Yeah, just absolutely stunning. Uh, if you like Dragon Ball, then this is a must, right? Um, just very happy to have found that uh, in a shop, in a CX store. Um, and then continuing with the, these are more sort of just sleeve covers. So we've got the lenticular cover for Batman Arkham City. A very uncommon one. Didn't even know this existed until I found it. I found this in um, Super Game Shack in Leicester. And that is Battle vs Chess. I think it only comes like this, but I think it was one of the games that was like released in Germany. Um, for every console, so Wii, PS3 and 360, it's an uncommon title. And uh, yeah, just one I was happy to find. Speaking of my favourites, I love this. I've never seen this uh, again since I bought it. I found it a couple of years ago now. And that is Call of Juarez the Cartel. I just love how it comes with this like bandolier. It's got like a magnetic piece on the side where it just connects and... Yeah, just again, that innovation, absolutely love it. One of my favourites. Uh, speaking of one of my favourites, Dante's Inferno. Played through this a few years ago, really enjoyed it. Again, a nice lenticular cover. That's another one which is marked up at CEX. Another lenticular cover, the limited edition version of Darkness 2. And we've got Dragon Age Origins Collector's Edition. Um, so that's like one of those sleeves that encases the whole game. A recent find, uh, Formula One 2013, the classic edition. Fable 2, limited collector's edition. Another recent find, this was the standard price, which is why I picked it up. Really nice condition, usually it's battered, and that's Grand Theft Auto 5, special edition. Another recent find, Halo Combat Evolved. Kane and Lynch, Dead Men. Metro 2033 limited edition, limited edition pack, only available at game. Not one you see too often. Another really nice one, Need for Speed Carbon Collector's Edition. Speaking of ones you don't see often, I think this was only like one of them ones that was released in certain parts of Europe, like Germany, because I've only ever seen this once. The game itself is somewhat uncommon, never mind with the sleeve cover, and that is Amerta, City of Gangsters. Prototype 2, all the prototype artwork's amazing. Uh, I've got a collector's edition you'll be seeing shortly. Uh, yeah, just always love the artwork with all their media. One I've never seen again before or since, very common game, Pro Evolution Soccer 2009. But the official game of the England team. So this must have come out um, for like a Euros or something. But yeah, I've never seen that sleeve cover. A really nice one that I found in a crack converters. Um, Red Dead Redemption. This one opens up. Very, very much one of my favourites. Another lenticular Red Faction. Armageddon, I believe it's called. Yeah. Saints Row 2. Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, the Legendary Edition. Um, another uncommon one, I had to go to eBay I think for this one, and that is Street Fighter 4. There are a few different Street Fighter 4 um, sleeve cover variants. Some were HMV exclusives I think, some are very expensive. Um, but yeah, really happy to uh, have found that one. And a Lenticular Vanquish.
Okay, and sticking with the big boxes and steel box, we've got Halo Wars. Nice steel book in that one. You often see the steel book, but you don't often see it in its uh, larger box. Star Wars Force Unleashed 2. Quite an uncommon steel book. This sells for quite a lot of money, actually. Uh, this is the Castlevania Lords of Shadow 2 steel book. Beautiful artwork on this one. Halo 4. Another copy of Bioshock. Narnia Prince Caspian. London 2012 Olympics. Dead Rising 2. And the big box of Halo Reach. Right, okay, and we're gonna finish on some more big boxes and special editions. And as I've already said, I love the artwork on the prototype games and this prototype 2 collector's edition is no different. Um, yeah, just so much effort goes into these. There's like metallic uh, layers to it. It's embossed in places. Yeah, just really nice that one. Somewhat of a basic collector's edition, this one, Street Fighter 4. I mean, I'm a big Street Fighter fan, so I felt like I had to have it in the collection, but it's, it's nothing special, to be honest. Fable 3, this is a nice one, although my leather is starting to fall apart. Just now, picking it up, there's bits of leather flaking off it. Uh, it's really cool, this is though, it comes with like a secret compartment inside this like novel. Um, yeah, Fable 3. Then we've got Arcana Heart 3, the limited edition. And quite a rare one. Uh, again, just one of them weird things that I had to pick up. I found it in CEX. And that is Halo 3 and Fable 2, the double pack. There's a lot of numbers going on there. I don't normally pick up Xbox 360 classics, but when it's presented in this sort of way with this double pack that I've never seen before or since then, uh, you know, I had to pick that one up. Uh, Ace Combat Assaults Horizon. The Evil Within. Forza Motorsport 4, this comes with like a whole load of books and all sorts, steel books. Uh, Forza 2. And then we're going to finish on a bang, quite a recent edition, an uncommon, now expensive collector's edition. And that is the Mortal Kombat collector's edition. Uh, it comes with a figure uh, and just beautiful artwork all around. And guys, that is my xbox 360 collection massive thank you shout out to you if you've stuck around this long i know there's a lot to look at um such as my love for the system there's a lot of games to go through so if you've watched this far into the video it's much appreciated let me know in the comments if you've stuck around this long and uh, yeah let me know what your thoughts are on the 360 it can be somewhat of a malign system i think um a lot of collectors prefer to go down the playstation route um and uh, yeah, maybe slightly disparaged towards the 360, but I don't know what it is. I just love it. I always preferred the 360 to the PS3. I love green. Maybe that helped with the display and so many cool things. And quite often they're cheaper than the PlayStation counterpart as well. So I just think it's a fantastic system to collect for. Prices are slowly starting to increase, but they're still very cheap. If someone said to me, I want to start collecting video games tomorrow, where should I start? I'd say look no further than the Xbox 360. Such a vast library, so many cool and obscure things to collect as you've seen in this video and there's still loads more that I need for my collection. So yeah, definitely be a great place to start your collection. And uh, if you are a 360 collector, let me know what I'm missing. Let me know what is uh, you know, a shocking admission from my collection. And where do I go from here? There's a lot of people trying to pull me into the full set, but so many games for the system that I just don't have the room to collect them all, man. I'm fighting the years to collect them all. But as always, play your games, keep it retro. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you on the next one in a bit. You're watching the Retro Ghetto. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Lock into the Retro Ghetto. Oh.